It's time. It's episode 79, the ATM podcast. Look forward to this every week. We get so much great feedback about it. The one and only Mark Watson. He can call anything. He can call a Coke can rolling down a hill. And in Wellington at the moment, at the Wellington Recreational Centre in Kilburnie, and this is secondary school water polo. I want to ask you about that, Watto. Geordie Barrett is off next year, 2025, six month stint in Leinster. And so he'll miss Super Rugby. This has been, well, when I say well spun, I mean, they've done their very best with this New Zealand rugby, and I'll explain that in a second. Ruahe Damon, Blues winning captain of Opiki, is pleading for the National Association to put more money into women's rugby because some of the women are part time, some of them are mothers. And some of them have to work seven days a week during that competition. Uh, yeah, but there's got to be um, someone paying for this. Or what, you just reach over to the big overdraft and just extend it by another however many millions of dollars? I don't know. We've got the Hurricanes to talk about. We've got the Warriors to talk about. We've got your Liverpool to talk about. All of that kind of stuff. Apologise to me! What a welcome back. Yeah, thank you, Marty. Yep, nice to be on a beautiful day down here in Wellington. I never get a bad day in Wellington. It is such a beautiful city. Yeah, just don't go into the centre of it, okay? Yeah, because um, that might sort of alter your viewpoint somewhat. Um, And how many water leaks have you witnessed so far coming from the airport to just kill Bernie? No, no, I've got to say, uh, taxi driver wasn't happy. He'd waited a couple of hours and then he just got a short fare with me. I did offer to pay him a bit more, but... He was just annoyed and grumpy. It was almost to the point he didn't want to take me. Okay, How dare yeah. you just go that close to the airport? Yeah. Understandable, mate. I mean, it's a tough life for those guys. And no one's subsidising them, Watto. It's not like News Hub with their hand out mm-hmm. going, hey, I'm a journalist, I'm important, I'm a television personality, pay for me. Go tell that to the taxi driver who's sitting there waiting for a big fare. Hang on yeah, a second, yeah. I jump in your cab. You know, you should be, you should be a $100 fare. I mean, don't these people understand the most basic... No, I'm not talking about the taxi driver. I'm talking about the self-entitled brigade. Don't they understand the most basic economics that are out there in this world? Oh, absolutely. It is. It's all market-driven. It's all market forces. I've got to say with the whole media thing, some of them, like, I genuinely feel for, but some of them, it's like, oh, you know, we want to deliver news. No, this is going to mean you can no longer be a C-grade celebrity and you can no longer be on television. That's the real motivation for you being so upset. Um, Yeah, tough world we're in. You know, as I say, Martin... um, you look at, you, you know, you and I, we're frustrated at times because we are outspoken. We believe, um, you know, we, we've got something to provide an audience. But it, it's almost these days, it's offensive, isn't it, on television if you have two white guys doing a TV no, show. No, it's totally offensive. No, ho- yeah. ho- 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 hopefully there's a bit of a shift and people start to actually realise, look, it's not actually whether it's gender equity or gender politics. Let's just have the best people doing it and let's give people what they want. And I'll keep saying it, Martin, you know, I, I've always stuck to my guns. I, I think I can be balanced, but I think I'm a good opinion guy when I want to be. And, you know, I'll say it, whether you like it or not, and I say it all the time, man's defeats on the front pages of the newspapers, man's victories on the back. We, we, we like the negative, don't we? A, and, yeah, and, it's also, and, and, and it's also, you know, you have a look at it, it, it it's also basically, um, you, you know, what's successful internationally on similar sort of media platforms. As I said in the past, you know, why do you think a show like, Married at First Sight is so popular because the damn thing's a train wreck. And when the media actually start realising this and actually stop worrying about, you know, Dana Johansson making a headline out of them, um, you know, these organisations might actually become a bit Mate, more Mate, I'm sitting there the whole time listening to this going, Sky TV, here's a proposal. Two grumpy old guys raving sport. That's the that's the title of the show. Do you not think that, yeah. that people would tune in and actually watch that show? Even if they hated us, they would tune in and watch that show. Instead, what do we get? Just a cheese after cheese after nothing after oh, after boring oh, after oh, platitudes oh, oh, after just, oh, oh, just oh, mate. I mean, yeah, no, you know, no, I know no, that they would get an audience. Which, I I know which, it would rate on, and and yet why won't they do it? Why this? It's, it's flabbergasting to me, isn't it? You know, this is what sports fans want. They want to see a couple of lunatics having a go. That's what they want. And you don't. I mean, you know, forget all the. Oh my God! You know, I don't like what they're saying. So what? The most popular shows in the world, half the audience doesn't like what's been said, but they watch it because of that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. Like I say, I mean, it can be cringeworthy at times, as I've always said, Martin, I don't care whether 50% of people hate me, 50% of people love me, as long as 100% of people are listening to me. There you go. And, and, and it's a funny thing. But yeah, look, the whole Sky thing, it's interesting, isn't it? I've said I've presented television show concepts. They are just seriously more interested in gender equity. They're an organisation who I think genuinely have a feminist thread runs through it. They're the ones that are so desperately wanting to try and elevate 
certain women's sports to the same level as the men's, and there's just not the market or the economy there for it. I think Opaki Super Rugby is a classic case. I mean, I'm hearing things they're no longer going to have the Tour de France. I'm hearing, you know, they don't have the IPL on there anymore yet. You know, they're about to go and spend a whole lot of money on a on a, a, a degrade national women's basketball league. I, I mean, you just scratch your head, don't you? And you go, look, sorry, have you, are you putting your own sort of political preferences and of they your are. own yeah, of they are. Yeah. ahead of genuine yeah. commercial That's it. ahead of yep, genuine they are. commercial success they are. You, you know I, I, but, but but i said this before it's interesting isn't it because you go back and you look at the people that sit on these boards and you've got every corporate buzzword you can imagine and yet they are just so damn ineffective they'll I mean, never run their own businesses model? like this but they'll what never run their own model? businesses or their own affairs no. like this and look no. this just dovetails nice into this aruhe de Mont comments and it's in a stuff article today and the interesting thing to me was that right at the very end of the article, the very last paragraph says, uh, Super Rugby Opiki has not captured the public's imagination. There has been no growth since the 2022 Rugby World Cup. Well, how long has it taken for that organisation to actually accept reality? You and me have been saying this since the World Cup final in October, that the next challenge for New Zealand rugby was to somehow capture that audience and continue with that audience. And they haven't. They failed. They failed the women completely. All they did was hire six high-performance managers who just sit there writing reports back and forth to each other. But there has actually been no growth, Mark. And I want to talk about Ruhe's comments because, you know, to me, it's like I sit in my job, you sit in your job. I want more money. I want a higher salary. I want a reward for the hard work that I put in. And I work my butt off for this organisation. Mm. But unless there is money coming through the door, I don't get paid. I just wonder where the self entitlement comes from you know maybe it was the Labour government which has just basically convinced everyone that if you want something you just put your hand out and the taxpayer will pay for it you know Ruhe the economic reality is you've got to have something to sell you've got to have a customer base and your product isn't getting that at the moment now you can go through a myriad of reasons for this and maybe one of them is because it's not that great to look at and people don't want to watch it well what say that's a reality and a truth you can't just sit there to New Zealand rugby the whole time and say, give us more money. There is no more goddamn money. You've got to go out and find that money. No, no, look, but I think I go back to the media and I go back to those um, left wing and I will call them strong feminists who I think have an agenda and they've, they, they've tapped into the woke world over the last six years under the previous Labour government and they've manipulated the environment and they've actually told these women that play rugby, you are the same as the Blues men. You are the same as the All Blacks. And, and, and you know, they've elevated their sense of self-importance. They've, you know, you see it with the women cricketers. You see it with the women's football team. And the reality is both all of those sports, not so much women's football, because I think it is a big sport at grassroots level, but a lot of those other sports are min minor sports, just, just somehow believing that, you know, we're entitled, you know, it took 120, 130 years to build men's rugby, et cetera. And so, we're, you know, we're automatically entitled to be alongside of them. We're elite athletes. And they're not. They're club athletes. Um, you know, oh, you know me, Martin. Look, I've spent my whole life around endurance athletes. I've seen guys who have just found a way to go overseas and chase the various running dreams, the triathlon dreams, whatever it is. Huge hours, huge volumes of training, mate. I'd never, ever heard any of them putting their hand out saying, I need to get paid from the government. I need to get paid by the body. They're doing it because they love it. Uh, you know, the, oh, we don't have enough time to train. Rubbish. You're playing four games in seven weeks of competition. I... I was down at, I think it was the College Rifles ground one night, and Willie Walker was down there with the Blues team, and I was just curious. I mean, seriously, the level of training that these guys were putting in is laughable. Then you look at somebody like Erica Fairweather. You go back to the days of the Erin Bakers. These guys don't complain. They train 10 times harder. They're more professional than any women's rugby player in this country. And how is it the media with this agenda, always seem to go in and back the women cricketers and the women rugby players to get paid more. Why are they not out there advocating for our individual endurance athletes? Good point. I'll tell you why. Because they're bloody ignorant of them because they haven't done their homework. But, you know, at the same time, constantly preach equity, but yet actually don't give those other women athletes in much tougher sports actually any level of equity at all in terms of the coverage they get, Martin. I mean, these guys just need to, you know... Well, I just think they need to accept some reality and live in the real world. And the real world says that if your product isn't selling, well, then there is no money for it. Apologise to me!